everybody, Anna Tribunske here, teaching for Dance Vision. I am so excited to uh, teach you today on the usage of upper body in Latin American dancing. It's one of my favorite um, topics to teach and to do because it helped me a lot in my own dancing and I hope it does help in your dancing as well. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, you might ask, well, wh wh why, what's the big deal? Why do I need to concentrate on my upper body in international Latin? Because a lot of the attention in the lessons and um, just the, the way you see the dancers dance is, you know, it's about the footwork and it's about the leg action and it's about the hip action and it's about the hands and the posture, of course. So those are all very, very important. I'm not going to cancel them at all. They are all very important, essential ingredients for um, good, proper, international Latin dancing. But, <laughs> you, you knew that the but was coming. Um, in order for us to coordinate our whole body and to make it dance like it's a um, coordinated organism, that it flows, that one movement goes into another, that there's a connection between the actions, is we can't ignore upper body because it is really, really crucial and essential. So first of all, what am I talking about? So what I'm talking about is, in a nutshell, is when you are, this way probably see better, when you are settling into your hip, yeah, when you settle into the hip, your hip, assuming that you got that and you, you're good, this is like in your body already, you're rotating your hip a little bit, right? So when you rotate your hip, if I rotate my hip, but I don't use my upper body, look what's happening. I'm going back with my hip and falling a little bit. You see that? So not the best look. So now if I use my upper body, and I rotate into my hip and I create opposition through my rib cage. I'm going to talk a lot about rib cage right now. I create opposition through my rib cage. I stand on the leg. I don't go anywhere. So one of the benefits, and it looks better, one of the benefits of being aware of what your upper body is doing and being very intentional about it is balance. That's number one. Two is the overall look, just looks fuller and richer, fatter, juicier. Those are all really good words for international Latin or American rhythm. Uh, but today I'm going to be focusing more on rumba, international style. Um, and then the other thing is you're just more coordinated overall. So that's a huge, huge benefit. Because you might look at some of these amazing dancers and go, how are they doing that? How are they just able to flow from one movement into another? Well, I'm going to share that secret with you. All right, let's get started. Now, for real. Okay, so first we're going to wake up our upper body. The way I like to do it, you could actually do it sitting on the chair. Like this. Totally chill. Watching your news or whatever it is that you're chilling about, having a glass of wine. <laughs> whatever it is you're doing, or you could stand with me, put your legs shoulder width apart, keep your knees fairly straight, put your hands on your hip and make sure your hips aren't wiggling because right now we're just going to focus on our upper body. So we go into arch our spine, look up, and we're going to curl. We're going to arch and we're going to curl. We're going to arch and curl, arch, and curl. Great. Another way to describe it is you're expanding your rib cage forward and then you're contracting your rib cage back. Bad posture. Usually you don't get to do that. So it feels kind of good. Expand it all the way forward and up. Contract it all the way in and back. Okay. 
Yes, we got that. Now let's go side to side. Two ways to go there. If you're sitting on the chair, actually, or if your knees are bent, a great way to get into it is to take your rib cage like that, lace your fingers through your ribs, right? like you like got yourself, and start moving yourself from side to side. Like I'm pushing on my left hand and feel how my right rib cage expands to my right. And I push onto my right with my right hand and expand the left rib cage. And I go side to side and side to side, side to side. If you're standing, another way you can get there is if you move side to side like this. Mm -hmm. Again, legs are very stable. Legs are not moving, hips are not moving. So it might feel a little strange, but it's good to get to those places, especially if you haven't really done much of that before. Okay, now the next way we're gonna go is we actually go into, again, you can sit. If you're standing with me, we're gonna twist our torso, but we're going to keep our head looking forward. So keep looking at me. Don't turn your head like that. Keep your head forward. So twist your ribs, actually. Feel like your ribs are being really pulled side to side, like this, yeah? If you're sitting, again, you could do that in the same way. If you've done international ballroom or some American smooth, maybe that motion's already familiar for you. Okay, okay. So after we've done that, let's actually do a little fun jazz warm up which is we're gonna bend our knees a little bit. We're gonna move side, forward, side, and back. Side, forward, side, and back. Now circle all the way around. And again, all the way around. And let's go the other way. Side, forward, side, and back. And side, forward, side, and back. Pull all the way around. All the way around. There you go. So we found a circular gyration of our ribs. Fantastic. Now you're gonna say, well, Anna, how is that applied? How is that applying to my fan or to my rumba walks or to my some, some, some in international Latin rumba? Well, I'm gonna tell you. As much as we use figure eight in our hips. Yeah? And the figure eight in the hips is actually the basis of hip action, Cuban motion in Latin dancing. Now we go into try and to use our upper body and create a figure eight action in our upper body. So we go into move our left rib cage forward, side, back. Right rib cage, forward side back. Left rib cage, forward side back. Right rib cage, forward side back. And they meet in the center, they meet here. We go back to neutral, but we don't really want to stay in the center because that's uh, the tendency to lose your posture, to lose your spine. So the moment we finish with one figure eight, we're gonna go into the second half. The moment we finish with left half, we're going into the right half. And one, and two, and quick, and quick, and slow. And two, three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, right? So that's the international rumba timing. The quick, quick, slow, two, three, four, one. Okay. All right, moving on. We're still not there. How are we connecting it to the mechanics of the hips and the legs and all that? Let's do it. So now we have the figure eight in our hips. Two and three and four, one. And two and three and four, one. Yep. Yeah. And now we have the figure eight in our torso. Two and three and four, one. And two and three and four, one. And now we're gonna bring them together. Let's do it. 
So the hip's going to go first. When the hip starts to go, the upper body works as an opposition, as like an old-fashioned scale. So if my right hip goes up, guess what? My left side, because we work in diagonals, see how we work in a diagonal stretch in Latin or rhythm, anything Latin or dancing in general, we like the diagonals because that's more dimensional. We're going to go right hip to the side, left rib cage to the side. So we have a diagonal pull between my hip and my side. By side, I'm talking about the rib cage that we just worked on, the front part of it. Okay? So I go around with my hips. Now, of course, my hip is creating a figure eight, and it's going to start going around. When my hip goes back and around, my left side actually expands forward. Maybe you'll see it here. My hip goes back and around, my rib cage goes forward. Okay, then my hip's gonna go the other side, they meet in the middle. Meet. Yeah, English as a second language. <laughs> then my left hip starts to go around in its figure eight motion and it goes back and my right rib cage now goes forward and then they go back to the beginning. So essentially, if you can visually imagine, you have a figure eight going on in your hips and also the figure eight going on in the torso and the torso figure eight always is in the opposition of the lower body of the hips figure eight. It's kind of like this, not what's that, tap, and like this. It's a little bit like this in the beginning. But once you feel that, it's actually gonna improve your dancing so much, you, you won't believe it. So now, another way to go, well, what is go side to side, side, and stretch your hip to the side, opposite rib stretches. Hip to the side, opposite rib stretches. So it's always in opposition, always in the diagonal, okay? So we're going to now do a kukaracha step with that kind of motion, with the hip action, figure eight, upper body, figure eight. Here we go. And two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one. Again, great tool. Stand in the doorway and let's just let that be your frame. Let that be your support. And then you just move everything around in between those hands. Okay, that is also a very, very fabulous way to warm up, to get your body into the rhythms, to get your body um, more sensitive to music. Fantastic. Okay. How are we doing on time? We're doing great, actually. You guys, you guys are <laughs> killing it. Okay, now I'm gonna add the forward and back and side steps. Okay, so when I go and I take, um, I'm gonna slightly go off topic, but not really, I'll, tr I'll bring it back. I'll go like this and I'll come back to where we started from. When I took a step, or you or they or she <clears throat> and got yourself over the leg so I'm on my right leg right now completely my whole balance my whole weight is on the right leg my left leg is pointed behind so I'm here I'm good there's no reason for me to go anywhere mm -hmm. so in order for me to start going from point A to point B I actually need to start con con contracting my right scapula First of all, so my right scapula is going to go down, which creates what? Which already creates upper body movement. And then my hips go, oh, something's happening. She's doing something here. And then I'm adding the rotation of my hip and the subtle action, the Cuban motion into my hip. And that does what? That brings my whole left side now forward. So I was here, 
and the whole left side came forward. Now I actually want to take that step forward. And then again, I got all the way to the left side. I don't want to leave a frame, so I'm going to go the other way. I got all the way to the side, and now I'm going to contract my left scapula down. Really, I'm talking about this muscle, and it's going to go all the way scapula to your lat. I'm going to contract scapula to lat, bring my hip around. Now it makes me go forward through my rib cage. Here I go, take a step. Yeah? If you use these concepts, I'm telling you, your rumba walk's going to improve like psh, nobody's business. Or samba walks, or cha-cha walk and lock. Really, those, um, the applications of these are, are really limitless. Okay, so now going backwards is a little bit trickier, okay? But I really want to address it, so stay with me, stay with me. So we have the front part of our rib cage, we have the back part of our rib cage, right? It's a, it's a cage that supports our organs and supports our body. So when we were doing, uh, let's say I'm bringing my right rib cage forward, my left rib cage actually contracts and then the other way, yeah? I bring my right, uh, my left rib cage forward and my right in behind me, behind my ribs, there, right there, that contracts, yeah? I'm going very detailed with you guys. So if you feel like you need to pause, go back, what the heck did she say? Please, by no, by, your, by no means, I think that's the expression. Okay, so then when I went forward with my right foot, and now the next step, I want to go backwards. Actually, I'm going to go this way. So I think that's going to be easier to, to see. I want to go backwards. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to contract my right scapula down, which brings my right hip around. Now what that does, it brings my left rib cage forward. Remember? It's the opposition. Right hip back, left rib forward. There I am. Now, if I'm going to continue stretching my left rib forward, I'm going to probably go forward. But I want to go back. I really do. I, I, that's my routine. I have to go back. So I'm going to now contract, rotate my hip around, and then what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating, um, as much as I'm creating the opposition with my, my left rib, I'm actually going to push my hip a little bit back, my right hip a little bit back, so it creates, uh, again, a movement, a feeling that I have to go back now. But if I don't use my left rib, I'm just going to fall backwards. And I don't want to fall, I want to be balanced, I want to be on top of my legs. So I create more rotation into my right hip, and then I push my right thigh back, I create more right hip, goes back, 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 and I create the opposition of my left rib, and now what, what it does, it releases my leg, and now I'm going to go take a step, and because the movement pulls me backwards, I'm going to take a step backwards. I know, a little tricky, a little tricky. So let's do it on this side. So again, I'm on my left leg, Scapula, left scapula down, a left rib rotates, creates the opposition through my right side. If I'm going to continue bringing my right side forward, I'm going to go be forced by my momentum, by the movement of my body to go forward, but I want to go backwards, so I'm going to actually create more rotation and more movement, a fatter butt, so to say, going backwards, and that prompts me to go backwards. Yes, but my initial movement was from my scapula, which is my upper body, and then into my ribs, and then into my hip, and then some more into my ribs, and then some more into my hip, and then I took a step. So it's a gradual process. It's a coordination, really. Your whole body needs to be dancing, even just forward, back walks. Okay, well, the sidewalks, 
Okay, let's take a moment here. Again, rewind, stop, rewind, stop, do your thing. Okay, now side to side. We already kind of done that. When we did our figure eight with our upper body and our hips, if we're just going to go into figure eight towards my, my right side now, and I am going to now, instead of staying in my doorway, I'm going to so all of a sudden, my doorway is going to disappear on my right. I'm going to go, oh, there it is. There's my shift. There's my shift of my weight. Of course, I'm using my standing leg to push off. Yeah, but I started that with my left scapula connecting down. First of all, my right rib cage expanding to the right. My left hip goes around and my right, keep, my right rib cage, blah, so I'm sorry, I'm stumbling a little bit. My right rib cage keeps going forward, keeps going forward, keeps going to go that way. I want to go that way. And then I push off my standing leg and I bring my hip under my body. And then I go and contract my scapula, bring my hip around. Let's say I want to close, Fig like a cucaracha. And then go, yeah, but I want to go that way one more time. All right, let's do it. Scapula, rib cage, hip, and two, figure eight, and three, and four. Change one end, two, and three, and four one end, two and three and four, one end, two and three and four, one end, back and forward and forward and back and back and back. There you go. Guys, thank you so much for doing this with me today. Thank you, Dance Vision, for creating this uh, wonderful resource for all the dancers around the world to get information. And uh, yeah, best of luck with your rotation in the upper body and creating expansion and contraction in your ribs. Okay, have a good one. See you guys. Bye.